What is up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Fit Biz You. I'm your host, Jill Coleman, and I want to start off today by saying, because this episode is going to probably, uh, it could potentially come off a little bit self-righteous, and that is definitely, definitely not my intention. So um, it is about how to uh, interact with busy people. And the reason why I wanted to record this is mostly because, well, two reasons. Number one, this is a lot of information I wish I had when I first got started, um, because I feel like there were times where I wanted to connect with or communicate to, or reach out to someone who probably was really busy and they were definitely at a, a different level, a higher level of success than me. And I felt a little bit put out when they weren't as available or they had some boundaries and things like that. Um, and so I, that's the first reason is I wish that these, that someone was talking about this or that I had this information when I wanted to connect with people who were busier than me, who had more on their plate, who had more balls in the air, et cetera. And the second reason why is because at Jill Fit, obviously in the last year, 18 months, we've done a huge up level in the business. And at this point we have five full-time people. We have three additional coaches in the business. We have a lot of moving parts. We're launching multiple times. We are making sales every day in the business, all good stuff, but I am definitely finding myself, um, a little bit pulled thin in terms of how available I can be energetically and how available I can be in all these different channels. I just finished up the physique 40 challenge, which was a fitness challenge on Instagram. We had an amazing turnout. We had over 1500 people enroll. And I think out of that, we had about a hundred something, 114 people actually complete the full challenge. Now the challenge itself wasn't just the workouts over 40 days. It was actually posting on social media as well. And as someone who was running the challenge, it was my job to make sure that everyone was felt like they were part of a community. And so I went through every single day, I read every single caption. I, you know, commented on some photos. I liked some pictures, all that kind of stuff on social, which was great. It was amazing. However, at the end of that, I realized that just energetically, I was pretty tapped out and there were times where things got missed, where potentially I wasn't able to get back to someone or DMs just got pushed down. And so being someone, and this is why I feel like I was a little bit, you know, reluctant to talk about this because it can come off as better than, but the reason why I want to talk about this is to give people a little bit of context about how to interact with someone who is busy. Now, I think, again, I think a lot of times, especially in our Western society, there is this feeling that busy equals important, right? If I'm busy, that means that I'm worthy. It means that people need me. It feels like my time is important. I think a lot of us are too busy. I think a lot of us are busy on purpose. I think a lot of us are busy as a badge of honor. I think, you know, if anything, I would like to get out of that word busy and get out of that feeling of busy and instead focus on productivity. But in order to be productive, we've actually done whole episodes on this. In order to be productive, we actually do have to uh, have things like boundaries in place and have channels of communication and be very protective of not only our time, but mostly our energy. Where are we spending our energy? How are we connecting with people? Um, and doing all of that while we're trying to grow our brand. Now, I will say, I think early days of Jill Fit, I had a lot more bandwidth, even though I was still personal training a little bit. And even though I was still, um, you know, doing some in-person classes and things like that in the first couple of years, I think that I had more energetic bandwidth because I just didn't have as many things. I didn't have as many balls in the air. I didn't have as many things on my plate. I wasn't trying to manage as many people. Of course, now not only managing clients and customers and all the people who deserve to be given my attention, I'm also managing five full time staff and three coaches. And so, you know, it, it just is a different way of working. And so I tweeted this out last week and I wanted to share it here because I do think it is valuable for people, which is when you're interacting with a busy person, just to remember a couple of things. Now, the good news is that busy people are typically good with boundaries. So for example, if they have had a good amount of success, and again, I'm not talking about someone who's working like three jobs, like that, you know, obviously that person is extremely busy. If you have multiple kids, you have three jobs, you have a whole bunch of stuff, you're definitely busy. I'm talking about someone who 
maybe we would want to connect with in a networking capacity. That's more what I'm talking about. I had this moment early on in Jill Fit when I was first getting into uh, fitness modeling and fitness competitions, and I was so excited. I remember I would read the magazines and look at all the people on the covers of the magazines and read through what they ate and who they were. And I just really loved feeling connected when you when you see someone on a cover magazine every month or you, you know, learn about what they eat and how they train, you do feel a sense of connection. And I remember reaching out to a few, a handful of fitness models who were my favorite fitness models and reaching out and, you know, being like, I'm so excited, you know, I'm getting ready to, to do some fitness modeling and I'm competing more. And I would love just any tips or anything you can share with me. Now, looking back, I think that I was probably looking for someone to notice me, right? Oh, if this person just knows I exist or this person, we would be best friends. We're so similar. We do things the same. And I think that a lot of that, that connection that I felt, obviously they didn't feel, they didn't know who I was. And for me to reach out just as a fan, it, I'm sure that they were flattered by that. I don't think anyone isn't ever flattered that they have fans or people who want to support them. But for, from their perspective within the industry, I was a nobody, you know, and I don't say that in a bad way. It's just like, I was a nobody. I was brand new to the scene. I did not have much to offer in terms of resources, connections, uh, clout. I, you know, I didn't have a platform like in, like Instagram and have, a, I didn't have a follower count. I didn't have a platform, like a podcast where I could have them as a guest. I didn't really have much to offer. And now that not that every single interaction needs to be reciprocal or transactional, but when someone is really busy for them to give their time to you or their energy to you, especially for free, it doesn't need, they need to feel like it's worth it. And not that it's worth it in terms of like, oh, I only associate with people who are like super successful and like have this high status, but it needs to give back in some way. So it, get, it needs to either be someone whose energy is bringing me up, or it doesn't have to be maybe monetary. It needs to be someone whose maybe energy is bringing me up, someone who has, who um, contributes to me intellectually, contributes to me uh, emotionally. Um, you know, some of my best friends obviously aren't paying to hang out with me, but for me, you know, that's where I get to relax and that's where I get to just chill and I get to just be me and not have to be on. And so anytime we're interacting with anyone, and by the way, you guys, it doesn't matter if you're busy or not, this is for everybody, is you have to evaluate who in your space is what we would call like an emotional vampire and who, who gives back to you and who gives energy to you. And these, these situations and these scenarios become even more important as you get busier, as you have more things on your plate. So when I say that busy people are typically good with boundaries, it's because they've had to, right? They're, they're at a level of success that has required it. They would not be at the level of success that they have if they weren't good with boundaries. So knowing that, let the person respond in their own time. Right. If you're interacting with someone who is busy, who you want to network with, who you feel like maybe is has something that you want to access, whether it's time or uh, energy or a resource or something like that, intellect, I don't know, whatever, realize that they're probably good with boundaries. So allow them to respond back in their own time. Now, I had this, this sort of tangential story that happened with me a few weeks ago. I had someone in my DMs who had. Um, downloaded a free course of mine. It was called Content Bootcamp and it was a 14 day free email course. And this person asked me to reach out on Instagram, was doing my course, it's free, and asked if I would look at their posts. Now, I don't do that. I don't even do that for my paying clients. I don't even do that for my mastermind members because that's a lot, right? Going through someone's Instagram and like auditing their account and stuff, that's not a service I provide. Um, and so this person said, hey, it wouldn't be too much trouble. Do you mind going and looking at my posts and see if I'm doing well? And that's not something I provide. And this was like Friday evening, you know, so I got that message. I, I showed that it was red in my DMs and I didn't respond back. And, you know, I don't know if I would have or not, probably I would have, but I probably would have said something like, oh, that's actually not something I do. I don't even do it with my paying clients, but you know, if you tag me, I'll give it a look and give it a little love, but I probably can't like evaluate, give you an audit. Anyway, I didn't respond back it's Friday night, next morning, 10 AM, get another message from the same person. And it was very passive aggressive. And it said, I guess it is too much trouble. I thought that you, if we reached out to you, then you would give us feedback. And so unfortunately for this person, it's not that I don't really appreciate that they're supporting the, the business by downloading something that's free or that they're, you know, using my tools and whatever, but it did rub me the wrong way because literally it was like less, it was like 12 hours ago. They reached out the first time. And so if I was planning on responding back, 
unfortunately, I'm just definitely not going to now. And that's not to be like, fuck you, but it's like, I don't do guilt, right? I don't do passive aggression. I don't do guilt. And so for me, this is obviously someone who is at the beginning stage of their business, right? This is a beginner course. So they're obviously at the beginning stages. So they don't know these things. And here's the deal. Even if I did have the time and the energy and it wasn't Friday night, I still probably wouldn't look at their posts, not because I'm a bitch, not because I don't like want to see them successful. That's just not something I'm willing to give my time to for free. Unfortunately, I can't do that because I know if I, here's the thing, it's a, such a small thing, right? You might just be listening to this and be like, Jill, what's the big deal? It's just like, you know, look at a couple of things, send a couple of voice messages, not that big deal, but it is because there's a lot of these little tiny things that if you continue to always not only give your time and energy to things that you didn't commit to or things that you said you wouldn't do, but you're just guilted into it or a passive aggressive comment makes you feel like you should be doing something more. It's all these little things that add up so that when you show up to your business and the things that you do need to spend the time and energy on, you're unable to because you're so drained, that's a big deal. So if you're interacting with someone who's busy, realize that they'll respond back. So for this person, I probably would have responded back, not on Friday night, but I probably would have responded back eventually, but because they didn't give me my time to respond back in my own manner and my own speed and all those kind of things, I didn't want to respond. I'm like, I don't, I, that's not a game I play. I don't feed into that level. And it's fine. Again, this person's a new B, which is why I wanted to do this podcast. That's why I wanted to sort of talk about this stuff, because I think some of the things are so nuanced. And as a newbie, you can take it really personally when someone doesn't get back to you right away or shows the messages read or something like that, you feel some kind of way. Number two, if you are pushy, it'll probably make them want to give you less time, give you their time even less if you're pushy. Now, again, if someone who has reached a level of success that they have a lot of balls in the air, that they're managing a lot, that they are um, energetically putting out a lot, that they have to be focused. They have to be, honestly, like, no one gets to be successful without focus. Honestly, like if you look at people around you, some of the most successful people, they have had insane focus, which means that they probably said no to a good amount of things. And that's hard because when people hear no, they don't like it. But if you're pushy, again, from an energetic standpoint, this person who you're looking to, to connect with, who has this level of success, they probably didn't attain that level of success with base level energy, base level energy being guilt, and shame and passive aggression and uh, you know things like that, like subtweeting, they probably didn't get to that level of success with things like that. So if you're pushy about it, chances are they're going to pull back even more. Again, for, especially for someone who is runs their own business, business owner, like we value our time, we value our energy, we value our autonomy more than anything. So if someone's like, hey, you need to get back to me in this amount of time with this thing, it's like, uh, yo. The second you start like making your emergency my problem, absolutely not. In fact, it's going to actually push me away even more. In fact, the people who, who I want to give my time to the most are the chillest. They're always like, hey, I know you're busy. Hey, do you mind getting back to me? They usually like, hey, do you think you could let me know by Friday? Hey, do you think you could let me know by end of day? Right? It's the energy that you bring. And again, I know that some of this stuff comes off kind of like I'm better than or I know better or whatever. It's not. But I just wish that more people would know this message because, you know, for example, I'm in a $25,000 mastermind and I don't say that number. I just want you guys to know that I invest in myself as well, but I would never go to my coach who out of all of his customers, we pay the most this is the highest level, the highest ticket thing he offers. And out of all of his customers, we pay the most and probably we're the easiest going. Number one, because we're just like, we just know the vibe, right? We just know like, hey, like, I don't want to bother people. I'm good. Like, I got it. And number two, we've, we've attained a level of success. We don't need to check in with someone all the time. So unfortunately, it is the people who are just getting started or some of those in the beginner stages that need to be checking, 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 checking. And they're the ones who oftentimes will need more handholding, more energy, more time and things like that. And I get that. Like, you don't quite know yet what to do. And I get that everyone in my mastermind, like, you know, they all have massive businesses. So it's like, they know what to do. They've gotten to a level of success. 
And if they do need something, it's probably just a little check-in or like a high level, it's probably more of like a high level, hey, here's where I'm thinking about taking the business. I'm thinking about bringing on a team or I'm thinking about, you know, launching this brand new offer. What do you think about it? It's probably these big level high strategy things. It's not these like little micro things like, can you look at my Instagram posts, right? So if you're pushy, just remember the energy that you bring is, are you chill or are you making your emergency or your urgency someone else's problem? Number three, understand that busy people value time more than money. So just because you pay for something doesn't necessarily grant you access to something else. And by the way, you guys, this is for everybody like across the board there, someone has not gotten to the point. Again, if you are super busy, remember the only non-renewable resource is time. You can always make more money, get more leads, make more sales, something like that. Yeah, of course it, there's you new know, effort there, but time is the only thing that is not renewable. And so if someone is busy, they value their time more than money. And they value time more than success, probably even, you know, when I first started Jill Fit in the first couple of years, it was a huge mindset shift for me. I think I've mentioned this book before. It's called The Powerful Engagement. And it really helped me understand energy management, not time management, energy management. And I started actually making decisions in the business. And this is really hard for me because I was someone who previously had really, um, who had really valued busy. Like I need to be busy, busy to be valuable, to be someone who's needed to be important. And so now instead I started choosing having downtime or choosing time instead of money. And that was really scary. I made all of my choices the first couple of years in business and continue to, by the way, but you really have to have an abundance mindset when you do that. Right. It's so easy to just grab a couple of bucks here, grab a couple of bucks there, do this. Okay. Someone wants to throw a couple hundred bucks at you. It's like, it's so easy. Just take that money but I always want you guys to filter it through what is more valuable here. And there's probably going to be a buffer phase. There's going to be a time when you're going to be like, ah, it's so easy. I'm just going to take this client. I'll just do this thing. It's a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there. Maybe start taking some jobs outside of, you know, health and fitness business. But what is the cost of that? At what cost is that? Because now it's not only taking your time away, it's taking your focus away, taking your energy away, taking your ability to be present away it's draining your energy battery. And so busy people value time more than money. They would rather forsake money to have their time. And lastly is when you're interacting with someone busy, do not take things personally. This is what's really hard. And this is oftentimes why people don't put in boundaries. If you're thinking to yourself like, oh yeah, I really need to get better on boundaries. My clients reach out on all different channels. They, they reach out all different times of the day, all different times of the week. I'm trying to take vacation. They're bugging me. It's unfortunate because it's so hard sometimes for us to put in boundaries when we know we need them. And the biggest thing is we don't want to disappoint people. We don't want to let people down. So if I have a boundary like, hey, you know, I don't do coaching in my DMs for, you know, my FBA students, my FBA is my beginner course. I don't do coaching in my DMs because I meet with them every single week. So every single week we literally get on a call and I stay on for like up to two hours most weeks to answer every single question, talk through every single download, anything strategy-wise they need to know, we talk through it and we go through, go on a lot of tangents, we had a lot of time together. That's their dedicated time. So when they reach out in the DM and they say something like, hey, Jill, I just had a quick question before next week. Now, again, it's one of those tiny little things. I could just answer real quick, right? It's just like a couple of seconds, just like a little quick thing. This person would be happy. Awesome. The problem is not this individual message, right? It's not this individual DM. It's setting the precedent for anyone else. Because then what? Someone else messaged me, then someone else messaged me. And now all of a sudden I'm doing all of these DMs. And now all of a sudden I'm DMing and I'm coaching the DMs for people who didn't sign up for that. And it's not that I don't want to, but at a hundred people in a course, that's a lot. So I have to say in those instances, I will say something like, Hey, so-and-so, unfortunately, I don't do any coaching the DMS. I know this is not like a huge deal, but I would love to talk about this on Tuesday. I also think that everyone else in the group would really valuable that would really find this valuable. If you can't wait till Tuesday, I would love if you just went into our closed Facebook group popped it in there. And there's some people in there who have are are a little bit further along and they can probably help you because we do have a community group for FBA. And that's all I say. And I say, and I usually something along the lines of, I'm sure you can understand that why I don't do this. 
And it tells me their response tells me everything I need to know about how successful they're going to be. Now, I hate to say that, but it's the truth. Their response to me having a boundary will tell me everything I need to know about their success. If they get upset, if they think I'm a bitch, if they check out of the process, just because of one tiny little interaction outside of the time that we discussed, that will tell me everything I need to know about their success. Number one, they're leaning way too heavily on me, not taking ownership, looking for someone to blame, looking to somebody to complain about. And they don't understand the energetics. They don't understand what is needed to get to the next level. And it's okay. It's again, it's okay. That's why I wanted to tell you guys that story about me starting out early uh, in my career, because I didn't get any responses back. I sent out a bunch of emails to a bunch of fitness models and competitors and got no responses back. And I think even at the time I did feel a little put out because I was so excited to connect with them. I think I did feel a little bit put out at the beginning, but then now removed years later, I'm like, oh, not number one, you know, I'm just an, another fan. It's fine, but I didn't have anything to offer. I wasn't, I was kind of a nobody. And also they're fucking busy. They're doing a lot of things. They're wearing a lot of hats. And so at the end of the day, I wanted to share this because I do think this is an important message just to filter through your own feelings, your own emotions about it, because it's going to come up. And especially when you're on the other side and you're the person who has a lot of people pulling at their time, pulling at their energy. And again, it's not to say some people are worth it and some aren't. It's not about some people are better and some aren't. It's just, you need to across the board, be able to manage your energy as a busy person so that you can give and that you can be present. I'll never forget. I met Brendan Burchard and I met Tim Ferriss two separate times and they both were some of the most present people I'd ever met. Like shook my hand, said, how are you? Nice to meet you. Look me straight in the eye. And you could tell they weren't distracted. They were giving me full presence. It was just for a few seconds, right? It was just like a a hello. It wasn't like a, a conversation or anything, but I'll never forget that. And these are two people who are extremely busy and have a lot of people pulling at their time and energy. And I was really impressed by that. And so moving forward, that's always been my goal too. I want you to know that if you're working with me, I will give you 100% presence in the agreed upon time, place, and channel. But outside of that, I can't. And I think that if more people understood this, number one, we'd have people moving, I think being more successful in general, because they're just, they're taking more responsibility but also not feeling emotionally hijacked about it all, right? Not getting emo about, oh, that person get back to me. That person respond to me. I guess I'm, I'm not worthy of it, whatever. Whatever story we tell is really just about managing energy and managing time. So hopefully that is helpful for you guys. If you are interacting with a busy person, remember, number one, busy people are typically good with boundaries. So let them respond in their own time. Number two, if you're pushy, it'll probably make them want to give you their time even less. Number three, busy people value time more than money. And number four, don't take things personally. It's not personal. It's just a boundary that needs to be in place, not because you're not great and and worthy and all those kind of things, but in order for this person to continue to grow and continue to be successful, and I hope you guys do the same, then there might be a boundary that you don't like at some point. And this is again, why so many people don't set boundaries is for fear of disappointing people or fear of letting people down or people thinking they're an asshole or a bitch or whatever. And believe me, I've had my share of those moments. But in the end, it's what you have to do if you really want to get to that next level. So hopefully that's helpful for you guys. I know it's a little bit longer episode today, but I wanted to get this down. This is actually the second time that I I, uh, recorded this. Unfortunately, my last one was deleted. So hopefully this one's even better. Uh, For those of you guys who are in those beginning stages of business, don't forget that I'm going to be launching FBA, which is my beginner to business course, Fitness Business Accelerator, this coming September. If you're not on the wait list, go ahead and get on that interest list. It's 100% obligation free. You can go to jillfitfree.com forward slash FBA dash waitlist. Again, that is jillfitfree.com forward slash FBA dash waitlist wait list. Go ahead and get on the interest list. You'll get all the early details and some homework to get started as well as an exclusive discount. And I will see you on the next episode. Bye guys.